What's up YouTube? I'm Valentin the Mad and this is a go review of The Witcher 3. So this review is a highly requested one and I probably should have gotten to it sooner, but nevertheless, here it is. Keep in mind that I'm reviewing the game with Ultra Gore 2 mod by Osepi Armainpi. This mod forces the gore variations to happen whenever they are available, instead of leaving it up to the odds. So now it's time to dissect the response mechanics and find out how gory The Witcher 3 really is. I'll be reviewing every aspect of the game's core effects and the score will be set based on 4 categories. Body damage, environment, animations and sounds, the fuel. The body damage can be divided into two categories, gory variations and cut wounds mid-fight. The gory variations happen on death and serve as a way to spice up your kills. You'll be seeing beheadings, limbs dismemberment, pieces of the torso sliced off, stomachs cut open, split heads and more. As for the looks, they absolutely deliver. You'll see all the gory details and there's plenty of blood around the wound, which is awesome. However, keep in mind that the damage is not dynamic and you'll never see more than one variation happen on the same character. They'll not be surviving dismemberment and trying to fight you while wounded. As for the body damage mid-fight, I was first going to say that there isn't any and it's not that far from being true. Those wounds are bugged and don't always work, however the bigger issue here is that they disappear very quickly. So quickly, I had to pause combat footage to first confirm that they do exist. This is very disappointing. Wounds should not be disappearing unless the character has a regenerating health ability, and some do have such an ability by the way. In any other case, it's just breaking immersion. One of the things I loved about Rise Son of Rome is that you can get characters covered in bleeding slice wounds. You'll not see that in Witcher 3. And of course, you will encounter damage sponges. Characters who can take way more damage than they should and show little to no response for that damage. Characters on a higher level than you will also take a ridiculous amount of hits. Those fights end up being a dance of attack, dodge, attack, dodge, use magic, dodge, repeated anywhere from 20 to 50 times. If an RPG or the size of the character are nice excuses, but they don't make those fights any fun. RPG or not, plastering a large health bar is the least creative way to up the difficulty, create a more challenging sequence or portray progression of any kind. Should be mentioned the lack of fire damage. When using a fire attack, a character may or may not show an animation after which they will extinguish themselves. It's somewhat understandable. Fire is one of the most common attacks and if you would have realistic fire behavior, many characters, such as people or wolves, would not stand a chance. I'd still prefer seeing a brutal agonizing death, but I can understand this design decision. As for the arrows, there will be no body damage whatsoever. As for the player character, the body damage is the disappearing cut wounds. There will be no executions or special variations on death. As you can also see, the ragdoll looks very odd. Geralt gets launched up for no apparent reason. To be honest, I don't mind it. It's so bad and looks so out of place that it's kind of amusing. You have blood stains on impact and blood pools on death. The impact stains look alright and are proportional with the splash effect. For the most part. You'll still see blood going into nowhere without staining the ground. The blood pools, however, do not look very good. You also see a short effect of blood reacting with water, but that doesn't last very long. And that's it. Those are the only mechanics you have. 
when a Gori variation happens, you just see another splash, and as you would expect, when you have disappearing wounds, you'll not be seeing bleeding effects. I also want to mention that plants can't get stained in blood. It's not a thing I'm usually looking for, but in a game where much of the combat happens on fields, seeing vegetation get painted red would be a good addition. Now how is the mess in the long term? Not very good. The initial stains on impact disappear in about 10 seconds and the blood pools in a minute and a half. Bodies and dismembered limbs, however, do seem to stay at least while you're around. I think that despite the very basic blood spilling, you could still have a decent aftermath if all of the mess would stay. And as I always say in the gore reviews, the amount of blood and bodies and whether wounds disappear should be configurable on PC. That way, if you want some extra frames you can configure the mess to vanish, but if your machine can handle it, you should by all means have an option to see the full aftermath. You have response animations on impact, executions, and short animations on death followed by ragdoll physics. The executions can be pretty cool, however they are short, there's a small variety, and on some of them you'll not see any body damage. Most other deaths will end either with a short animation or ragdoll. So really, the animations aspect is not very impressive. I haven't seen any interesting response related animations and there will be no changes of behavior for wounded characters. Someone on the verge of death will keep fighting like nothing happened. You have response sounds on impact, characters will react when hit, make sounds on death and sometimes comment during the fight. The best way to describe the sound aspect is basic and solid. You will hear response on every single hit, it's alright, but not particularly gory. It has its brutal moments when you hear gargling and blood being spewed, but those are not very common. Well, the feel is not very good. The best response related feature would be the gory variations and I guess the sounds are alright too. Pretty much everything else is either uninteresting, flawed or both. It's a shame. Games that feature magic and odd creatures have a lot of room for creativity when it comes to response mechanics, because realism is not a concern. So the score for body damage is 11 out of 30. The score for environment is 12 out of 30. The score for animations and sounds is 17 out of 30. I give the feel a score of 4 out of 10. So this gives the gore system of The Witcher 3 a total score of 44 out of 100. At certain points in the game you encounter a very mutilated body and your character will try to figure out what happened by examining it. If you try doing that to characters you killed with the response mechanics as they are, you simply wouldn't be able to do that. Goro would I recommend it. I absolutely would. I enjoyed it much more than I expected, especially when I don't like fantasy games and rarely care about the story. So what got me to enjoy it? For the most part it's the writing, which in my opinion really is exceptional. It got me hooked and that doesn't happen a lot when it comes to storytelling in video games. I ended up enjoying the dialogues much more than I enjoyed the combat. One smaller thing I really liked is the way magic regeneration works. It's a stamina bar instead of mana potion guzzling. Not a huge thing, but I wish we would see that more often. To sum it up, it's not the gore that kept me playing 23 hours of this game and enjoying every moment. Hope you enjoyed watching the review. Let me know how I feel in the comment section and if you liked the video, subscribe and share it around. You can find the link to all of my gore reviews in the video description. Until next time!